Hello everybody, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. I'm Watermelon, but you can also call me Melon. And let's go ahead and get into today's video. So as you can tell by the title, I am showing you guys a pink freezer bunny bedroom. Um, and I actually made this, if you guys remember, Akira Kibo from City Living. He lives in an apartment in San Mishino with, um, what's her name? Uh, Miko Oho, I think, and Darling Walsh. Um, but in my personal save that I made that you guys may or may not get your hands on one day, um, he marries, uh, this thing that I made to be a model, um, after a very, like, love of, not like a love affair, but a very interesting love life. One of the more dramatic ones I've ever had. Um, so yes, in the save, they have a child together. They are officially married. It's super cute. Um, and I decided to give her a pink freezer bunny bedroom because I feel like we had enough freezer bunny stuff, but then when I went to go do it, I feel like we don't have enough. And I wish we had, like, more things in the game to, like, focus on in the sense that, like, you know, like, bands and video games and cartoon characters and stuff for us to make themed rooms on, um... But yeah, so I, I decided, like, the first one I would try to do is a, this pink freezer bunny bedroom. And the footage actually had more than just this room, but it was like, I guess I had started recording the renovations to this house that I was doing for them in the middle of the process. And I decided that you guys would eventually just see a tour or photographs or something of the rest of the house. So I just decided to keep in the clips of the bedroom instead, especially because I put the most effort into this room. So that's what I did. <laughs> um, but yeah, as you guys can see, I'm just kind of trying to figure out how I'm going to lay out the room since it's really just a square, um, how I'm going to separate it, putting in this wallpapers and such. And um, a lot of these pictures that you can see on the left, well now the main wall, um, are ones that Akira's painted throughout his like art career as a freelance painter. So those are really cool. Highly recommend that career path. It makes so much money. And also, it's really pretty because you see a lot of like paintings you probably won't see if you just do traditional painting. But yes. Anyways, um, I'll do like something random. I, if you guys don't watch Stephanie Sue on YouTube, she is a mukbanger or muk. Yeah, I think that's how you say it. Um, so she records like mukbang videos. So. Basically, it's her, usually her cousin or other relatives, and her fiancé eating on camera. And typically, they talk about true crime stories, but she also does very fascinating ones about things that just interest her, whether they're Reddit stories, um, movies, books, and so on and so forth. And honestly, it's very inspiring, and I kind of want to do content like that as well. But I don't know if I would do it on this channel in, like, hopes for my, like, commentary because I don't think I'm, like, the most interesting person in the world. At least I don't have a ton of incredible crazy story times. Um, and I'm actually going to try to experiment doing so later. Uh, but anyways, I was watching one of her videos today and it was so interesting. It was about a, um, performance artist and I think her name was Marina. Um, and... I will link the video down below for you guys to go ahead and watch, but it was just so fascinating to hear about. Um, Stephanie, for instance, talked a lot about how, like, her performance pieces, which sounds so incredible, and I don't want to really try to, like, re-explain them just because I think she did it so well, but one of the most fascinating ones was, it was, I think, nearing the end of her performance pieces, or at least um, the story, if you guys hear that, I'm sorry, I think there's, like, a plane <laughs> overhead. Um, but apparently, like, Marina, uh, one of her performance pieces was she was in a museum, and she sat at this table, and it actually kind of mimicked a performance she had done with an old love in the past. Um, but she sits at this table silently, and guests who go to the museum to see her are allowed to sit across from her, like, one at a time for however long as they'd like. And it was fascinating because of her for one, preparation for this experience. She did a lot of preparing to stay, like, as still as possible, to stay silent, to give a lot of concentration to the person in the seat in front of her. And it was beautiful to hear for much, for one, how much she, like, sacrificed to do this, but also how captivating the experience seemed to feel for those who went in to basically see her. And it was absolutely phenomenal. It sounds like very raw, but also very like human nature and like psychological 
discussions could have come from it. Um, but it was just so interesting. She said that for one, she was mirroring a lot of people's pain because, you know, it's someone, a complete stranger sitting across from you, silent. And she kind of just tried to mimic what, like what she felt like she was feeling from them. And even sometimes she would mimic their actions, but it's not really mimicking and like, a humorous sense. It was more so as if she was going from what she felt and it was a true reflection of the person across from her. And one of the people who actually came in for a moment was her ex-love who she hadn't seen for over two decades. And she allowed herself to kind of break her quality of her performance. Not really the quality, but she broke one of her rules by instead of just staying still, she had reached across the table to hold his hand and they held hands and they cried and it was beautiful. And for what I want to watch this documentary, like if it's a documentary, I want to watch it. If it's not a documentary or a movie or anything of the sort, I need it to exist. It sounded absolutely beautiful. And I'm someone who like has an appreciation for art. Personally for me, I want to be a published author one day. I am going to school for a business and creative writing degree. I have a lot of like natural appreciation for more so like spoken word poetry, um, writing pieces, novels, the written word more so. And I can appreciate visual art as equally just because I don't fully understand it, but I always tend to fall in love when I understand the inspiration, the muse, and the meaning behind what someone's created. And so hearing a lot about her life and her life's work from Stephanie's video that I again am linking down below, I was captivated, intrigued, moved. It was so beautiful. And I just felt the need to tell you guys about it. Um, but this is pretty much wrapping up the room. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, leave a comment down below what more you'd like to see. And I hope to see you all next time. Have a wonderful day. Bye.